So at the start of last week, I said that this would traditionally be the time that I would be in Mexico with my friend, Father Mark Dolan, uh, enjoying a Mexican vacation, some sunshine, and some margaritas. But one of the things that we always do every day is we begin the day with celebration of the Mass on this terrace which overlooks the bay and beautiful view. And we always discuss the, the scriptures when it comes time for the homily. And one of the things that today's gospel reminds me of him so much is that uh, after that long list of things that come out of a man's heart, or, or a woman's as well, Father Mark said, you know, I have never had anyone confess to me in the confessional folly. That they, that they have not confessed folly as this evil that comes out of their heart. And why is that? Even though Jesus is the one who says, blasphemy, arrogance, folly, and these are the things that come out. It, maybe it's because we sort of dismiss folly it's like, well, that was just, it's kind of like the um, saying, uh, the storming of the Capitol on January 6th, well, that was folly, but um, it wasn't anything, <laughs> you know, it, it, it didn't really matter, that, that's not serious, you don't have to to confess that as evil done. I think we would say differently when we consider the lives of the people that were killed on that day, those who were injured, and the, the very assault on our government. Uh, that was folly, and it was dangerous, and it was very hurtful. Those are the kinds of things that defile because it comes from from within the heart. I don't think it is anything that they ate other than ideas that they ate and those became part of them. Uh, to storm the capital. It's just, just a little musing on this, this long list of evils that come out of a person's heart and defile the person from within. More importantly, in the first reading today, we heard of how uh, the man was formed from the clay of the earth. I mean, I thought, well, didn't we just hear the story of creation the other day? And that's not how it happened. All this, God made, created man in his image and likeness. He created him, male and female, he made them. And so what gives? Well, there's two stories of creation in the book of Genesis. The one we heard first is the first one, uh, chapter 1. We're hearing the second story of creation, and it's chapter two. There are two different authors, or two different schools of thought, that uh, creation in the book of, uh, or the one we heard first, is one school, and the one we're hearing today and we'll hear tomorrow is a different school that presents, looks at God and how God operates uh, differently. The point that it makes, however, is that we're going to be hearing this next Wednesday when we gather, or, or whether here, or online, or in our homes, to pause to begin the holy season of Lent with Ash Wednesday. And with the ashes that will be placed on us, with the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Well, why do we say that? Well, because of this story of creation we just heard today. Out of the clay, out of the 
out of the ground, God formed the man. It's kind of like little kids, you know. I don't know if you ever did it, playing with mud. Did you, anybody ever play with mud? Did anybody over there ever play with mud? You know, I did. And, and you make little things with them. I mean, you can work the mud and you can make people or you can make horses or you can make dogs or you can make whatever. Uh, you can make your little figures. And so God was playing with mud. And so oh, I think I'll just, I'll decide to, to make something that looks like this. And then he blows. And the spirit of life enters into him. And the man becomes a living being, is what we've heard. We're formed from the dust of the earth. And remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We also heard about the prohibition about eating from the fruit of the middle of the garden. Do not eat at lest, or you are doomed to die. They ate it, and with that disobedience, death entered into the world. And we, as the children of Adam and Eve, uh, suffer because death entered in with disobedience and sin. Just a reminder of what we do next Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, of why we receive the ashes, to remember that we're dust, to remember that we will die, but also to remember that God is the one who made us and blew his spirit of holiness into us, and that even though sin has entered into the world, and with sin, death, the grace of God has far surpassed it. The grace of God is greater than sin. In fact, and in Jesus, sin and death has been conquered, has been overcome. And that spirit of the risen Lord has been breathed into us at our baptism so that we can live as the beloved children of our Heavenly Father with our true dignity and honor. May these words of the scripture today give us encouragement to enter into the holy season of Lent one week from today, remembering what we're made of, but also remembering the great call that we have to live to be who we truly are, God's beloved children. Let us pray. For the church, that she may announce the gospel message and bring people to conversion of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as the church prepares to enter into the season of Lent, we may hear the call to repentance not as a, a chastisement, but rather an invitation to live the life of grace that we have received. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our government and its leadership, and especially the members of the Senate, the United States Senate, now deliberating the impeachment trial of the former president, Donald Trump that justice and truth may prevail in the deliberations and decisions we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue praying for the members of our state legislature now in session, that they may be given the energy that they need to do the work entrusted to them for the good of the people of the state of New Mexico. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to abate and overcome the coronavirus, for the doctors and nurses and hospital staffs that are treating patients who are so critically ill with this disease. And 
may God grant them the encouragement that they need and the energy that they need to continue to do their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the manufacture, the distribution, and the reception of the vaccines against the coronavirus, that all of this may continue on effectively and efficiently so that this virus can be stopped. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the health of Julie Lopez and for the repose of the deceased, Ophelia Romero and Frank and Rosemary Holland. And we also remember the, the Benedictine sisters throughout the world um, as they honor their foundress, uh, Saint Scholastica, and the following of the rule of Saint Benedict. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, grant us the grace that we need to serve you joyfully and generously as did St. Scholastica. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We bring the offerings of our devotion to be consecrated by you, O Lord, in commemoration of blessed Scholastica. For by the consolation you give us in this life, you show that we should not lose hope of what is promised for eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice on my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With a bow, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My heart overflows with noble words. To the king I address the song I have made.
Let us pray. Renewed, O Lord, at the wellsprings of salvation, we humbly entreat you that through the intercession of blessed Scholastica, holding more closely day by day to Christ, we may merit to be co-heirs in his kingdom of grace, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I got my second shot for the vaccine yesterday. They say it's supposed to be the harder one, but I can move my arm. They say you get tired. I guess I was. I slept in today. I didn't get up at 5 to go do my walk. So Get your vaccine. Stay safe. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.